So the other day I stumbled across a remarkable piece of engineering that stumped me a little bit. This device appeared to go on indefinitely. It didn't seem like it would ever stop. And while this is possible, it's only possible if we launch something into space and it just continues without running into anything. But this was here on Earth. This wasn't a video. This was something tangible. If I wanted to, I could have touched it. If you didn't look at the title of the thumbnail of this video, then you probably don't know what I'm talking about. But if you did, which is probably why you clicked on this video, then you probably do. What I'm talking about is the miraculous feat of engineering that we call a drinking bird. Several years ago, it was explained to me what a drinking bird was. It was told to me that it would bob down and then something inside would change, that there was some kind of water or liquid inside would shift the weight so that it comes back up and then it would continue and do that again. And this is true, but there's one important part of the puzzle that we need to put into place for this to actually be true. Otherwise, the drinking bird just stops moving. So what is this important part of the puzzle that we need to put into place so that the drinking bird can continue drinking for what seems like an indefinite period of time? That, my friend, would be merely a glass of water. Hello, everybody. Welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video because it's going to be a pretty cool one. Also, double check my channel if I've got any videos posted after. After this in the next video at least should be pretty cool. I've got some stuff lined up that I really want to take care of but there's a, an important piece of the puzzle that I need to find and put into it and that's been kind of a challenge for me lately. The video is going to be awesome though so it's going to be worth the wait. When I first looked at the drinking bird I was like okay what is causing this to continue indefinitely? Side note have you ever thought about how weird it is that I just talk to a camera for fun? Like, I'm, I'm sitting here and the only other living thing in this room, which is my bedroom, is my cat. But this drinking bird was bobbing back and up and down and back and forth, and it didn't seem like it was ever going to stop. So what was fueling this toy? That's what we're going to cover in today's video, so make sure you stick around. To understand how a drinking bird works, you're going to need a little bit of a background knowledge with regard to evaporative cooling. Now, it's common knowledge that water has three general easy-to-make states of matter. Now, this applies to all other substances as well. It's just some substances, you have to get them really hot or really cold to get them to their most extreme states of matter. Luckily for us, water is pretty close to a manageable temperature, but even closer to room temperature is mere isopropyl alcohol. Now, if you have any isopropyl alcohol at home, I urge you do try this because it is really going to help you with your understanding of the drinking bird. What I want you to do is take a little bit of alcohol and splash it on the back of your hand. I would suggest doing it over the sink, but since I'm making a YouTube video, kind I kind of do have to do it in the studio. So the first thing I notice when I pour this on is it's cold. Like, quite cold. Now, after 30 seconds or so, the second thing you'll notice is that it's mostly gone which is the alcohol itself evaporating and becoming a gas. If you do do this at home, by the way, do it in a well-ventilated area because it can get kind of stinky and nasty. Now, alcohol makes a good hand sanitizer because it kills germs, but it also evaporates quickly. So your hands get dry fairly recently after you apply hand sanitizer. Now, my hand is still quite wet, but I did use a lot of this stuff. I would urge you to maybe use a, something a little bit smaller, like use a spoon and splash it on your hand, but it doesn't matter because the alcohol will evaporate really quickly. Now, you may not realize this, but the fact that the alcohol evaporates really quickly, as well as the fact that your hand gets cold once you splash it on there, it's the same principle. It's the, it's the same reason. Now, it's not that they cause each other because that's not true, but the fact that the alcohol evaporates so quickly causes it to become cold. Now, this is counterintuitive because you're like, okay, so wait, heat goes to the alcohol, which makes the alcohol warm, which makes it cold, but that's not exactly how it works. The alcohol is actually taking heat from the surrounding atmosphere and from your hand and making it so that that heat is transferred into energy that makes it that makes the alcohol evaporate because of this the heat is sucked away from the 
other places that it's taking heat from, which makes it cold. That's aspect number one. Aspect number two is very similar, but it uses principles of thermodynamics and like when you pressurize something, it gets warm. And when you depressurize something, it gets cold. The alcohol is under enough pressure that it stays a liquid and it is in a bottle now, so it's not gonna evaporate a ton. There's still gonna be some evaporated alcohol in the air inside the bottle, but we can ignore that. But once the alcohol evaporates, the pressure goes down drastically, which ends up making whatever's around it or whatever it was touching significantly cooler. Contrary to the other process that we were talking about, which is the evaporation causing the cold, but the cold can't cause the evaporation. This actually isn't quite true. I lied to you just to make the explanation simple. Now evaporation, which is depressurization, causes cold, which means that if you make something colder, you can cause pressurization. And that those are all the background concepts that you need to know to understand how the drinking bird works. Before we explain how the drinking bird works, we need to understand what makes it work other than the scientific concepts. So the anatomy of a drinking bird. Number one, the head. The head is covered in felt and usually has a beak kind of like that sticking out that will end up dipping in the water. Then there's the neck, a glass bulb with a tube extending down. This tube goes all the way down into another glass bulb. The tube ends up sticking much further down in the glass bulb than in the top. In the top, it's connected directly. In the bottom, it sticks down and almost touches the bottom, but not quite. Here, I'll show you a diagram that I found of a drinking bird's anatomy. Now, inside the drinking bird is a easily evaporatable substance, such as alcohol. It could be water, but that would require a lot different circumstances for it to work. Other than the liquid, there is nothing else in the drinking bird. Now you may look at it and be like, wait a minute, there's gotta be air in there, there's empty space. Well, all of the air in the drinking bird is actually evacuated, which means that it's not there anymore. So any empty space is either filled with nothing or vaporized liquid. Therefore, everything inside the drinking bird is the same substance. The liquid inside the drinking bird is di called dichloromethane. Now we're gonna go through the cycle of the drinking bird step by step. Number one, the head dips in water. This is where I'll start the cycle because this is how you need to get the drinking bird going. The head dunks in water, and because the drinking bird is at such a shallow angle, the bottom of the tube actually pokes up above the surface of the liquid. This allows vapor to rise and liquid to seep down. Because of this, the bottom becomes heavier and it springs upright once again. Now we have to remember that the felt head of the drinking bird was just dipped in water. Now the water is evaporating, which as we proved with our earlier experiment, it makes the vapor inside cooler. Now because of the special circumstances and these drinking birds were created so that they would work, this temperature difference is actually substantial enough to be able to condense the vapor that's inside the head and turn it into a liquid. Now because of the lower temperature and the condensation, the pressure in the head drops substantially, which ends up pulling the dichloromethane from the bottom up to the top. This is aided by the fact that the base of the drinking bird is actually being warmed by the surrounding air co as compared to the temperature of the top bowl. The higher pressure in the bottom and the lower pressure in the top lead to the dichloromethane being pushed up the neck of the bird. As soon as the bird becomes top heavy, it ends up tipping over and dunking its head in the water. In doing so, the bottom of the neck tube rises out of the water, vapor exchanges with the dichloromethane, and the cycle repeats itself once more. If I did not do a good enough job explaining this please let me know down in the comments because I really do like making videos and if I need to make another one that's not the end of the world for me but if it did help you please let me know that too so that I know that my work is getting out there and helping people understand these crazy concepts if you enjoyed this video a lot then make sure you subscribe because there's nothing to lose from it it's free I'm not gonna bombard you with notifications because I don't make that many videos and you can always unsubscribe if you're unsatisfied but that's not what I want to leave you with today I want to leave you with the scientific wonder that the drinking bird is and it's only caused by water evaporating into the air which is actually pretty insane. The temperature difference is so minimal and yet the heat engine still manages to bob up and down for hours if not days or weeks. All this needs is a steady source of water and it could go on indefinitely. But I want to stress the fact that this is not perpetual motion because eventually all the water in the glass is going to evaporate and if that happens then it's 
just gonna start to bob less frequently and it's gonna eventually stand upright. And you're like, wait, but what if you continuously give more water? That's essentially just adding more energy to the equation, which is like saying that a light that's plugged in is perpetual motion. Now the drinking bird is very energy efficient. The drinking bird is not perpetual though. It's gonna stop at some point. And although it doesn't stop because of friction, there's some amount of energy that has to come into the equation to overpower that friction. Which means that while it's pretty cool and it seems like a perpetual motion machine and the Amazon page for it claims that it's a great example of perpetual motion, it's not. We can't harness energy from nothing. That, n no.